I'll go over the first two, um, select board salaries and the select board expenses. Uh, the select board salaries, is, there is a need for some support, uh, for some assistance, especially with boards and committees for posting, doing the agenda, doing minutes, and following the, um, the regulations that are required for all of those public buildings. And there's also, uh, especially for uh, planning board conservation, and that assistance is a little bit higher level. Uh, we have a um, keeping up with the minutes for all of these committees that meet on a regular basis. That's what that, is, uh, that first line item is for. Um, the select board expenses is uh, the staff support. When we are, um, we've been hiring through a temp uh, agency, which has proven to give us um, high, high qualified people. Than when we're, we are also advertising, but we seem to be doing best when we use the temporary, uh, the temp agency. Uh, the reserve fund transfer, I was very happy uh, that the finance committee um, voted to raise that. And the reserve fund balance is used when we have um, un unforeseen expenses, and that supports that, keeps, it, keeps it, uh, the budget stable when there's emergencies. Uh, the town accountant, we were hiring an independent accountant in support of a company that we use to do all of our accounting services. Uh, that, so she uh, actually went to work with Melanson, who's the company that we use, so that expense went up higher in that accounting line item. Conservation Commission, as you know, we have a new conservation agent and that there's a need for uh, more hours as well as the rate for that uh, conservation agent is much higher than our former agent who had done this for many years. Uh, the police expenses, as you can see, we're moving capital. That I'll be explaining later. Uh, to own a cruiser, we're going to lease a cruiser instead. Uh, and as well as, I'm um, going to jump to the highway expenses. Uh, typically, there's been an article that's written to help support the funding of the ditches, but it makes more sense, and the finance and the capital uh, both agree that it's, it makes more sense to put that in as an operating maintenance expense in the general budget. I'm going to move this now to uh, our treasurer. Linda, do you want to do the last two?
I'll let you guys. Sorry, Sorry about that. that. Yes. yes. Okay. That is for the building inspection salary. Uh, for historically, uh, that D's position provides all the administrative support for building. Uh, that was paid for out of the planning board uh, line item. And as building inspections has gotten increasingly more busy, D is spending all of her time um, in that office. So this is uh, typically what David Nixon would call kind of a cleanup article. It's having the money come out of the building inspection department where it should be. Any other questions? Edwin, back to the microphone, please. Uh, yeah, this is the one that's going to start this week. So are we adding the $1,000 to the budget or we already did the deal with it? Adding. Okay. Wait, do you mean for that line item? Yes. yes. We're adding for that line item, but that, yeah, if I remember correctly, then that amount is going to be coming from the planning board that will help support that position I talked about a couple minutes ago to support the boards. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Thank you. All opposed? It is required a majority vote, it passes. Article 2. Move that the town vote to amend the fiscal year 2022 annual enterprise fund budgets by amending the funding sources in the amounts in table B1 as presented at the October 16, 2021 special town meeting and incorporated by reference herein. Do I have a motion? Second. A motion and a second. Sharon, can we handle this one as well? Or Linda, whoever. This is not a change in the budget at all for enterprise funds. It is the same budget. Uh, what, what we ran into is to how we're going to fund it. We are limited in the amount that we can say we use the funding by the amount that we raised the prior year. Being a COVID year, the uh, sewer and water revenues were also down last year. So even though we expect revenues to be increasing into this year, in order to balance the budget, we had to shift, um, we had to limit the amount that we were allocating to come from revenues for water and sewer and instead have it come out of reserves. So the same budget is covered, this is just a funding change and um, hopefully we'll see improvement in this area as well. Thank you. Any questions on this? I, I forgot to mention that the select board and the finance committee both unanimously recommend this. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Okay, this is a majority vote also, it passes. Thank you. Article three, move that the uh, the select board and the finance committee both recommended this unanimously. Move that the town vote to transfer $375 from free cash to the Agricultural Commission right to farm science account. Do I have a motion? No, second. I have a motion and a second. Amy Parsons is going to speak to this, please. Uh, essentially, in uh, 2020 at the annual town meeting, um, $600 was allocated. The final cost of putting up the rate right to farm signs cost $975. So they're just looking for $375 to close that out. Anybody have any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 4, move, so the select board and the finance committee both recommend this unanimously. 
Move that the town transfer funds from various accounts as delineated in Article 4 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 16, 2021, and incorporated by reference herein. Got a motion and a second. Joyce Trumbull, you, you can speak to this? Yep. Yes. Um, <clears throat> this is a housekeeping article. Um, Upon completion of projects which had prior town meeting, funding of both is needed to return any unused balances to the original funding source. As you can see, Mount Warner <coughs> Monitor Lake, $148.59. Lake Warner Testing, 216. Lake Warner Boardwalk, 1,517. And Sewer Line Assessment, 1,278. Five hundred. I have one thousand five hundred twenty-eight dollars and twenty cents. Back to the sewer reserves. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Andy. I just want to thank the town for their generously supporting the effort to um, revitalize Lake Warner. It's uh, one of the most beautiful places in town. Come check it out. Your tax dollars are there. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 5, this is a capital article. Move that the town vote to appropriate $629,954 for expenses associated with the capital projects as delineated in Article 5.1 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 16, 2021 and incorporated by reference herein and to fund said appropriation to transfer $15,000 from Hadley Media Reserves to borrow $130,000 for repayment from water reserves to borrow $130,000 for repayment from sewer reserves and to borrow $354,954 for repayment from general funds. The treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow set amounts under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8 of the General Laws, and or any other statutory authority, that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the town, and any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium apply to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. This being capital is a two, requires a two-thirds majority of pass. Do I have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Mr. Phil, will you speak to this, please? So the Capital Planning Committee uh, unanimously agreed to keep any capital articles within the levy to avoid a debt exclusion uh, ballot vote. And so what we have here is a uh, $75,000 for a DPW highway drum and asphalt roller. Uh, we have police PCs and equipment. And just a note on this, the police chief applied for it was in excess of $100,000, I believe, uh, IT grant that will hopefully cover a lot of this, well, all of the police computers if it's approved or if it's awarded, as well as computers in town hall and other areas of town. So obviously, if we get that grant, we won't actually be spending the $20,300, but it's there as a backup. Uh, public safety communications equipment for $199,654. This is for dispatch radio consoles here at 
at the main station that are uh, beyond their useful life. They're no longer repairable. It's hard to get parts for. Um, so the, those are the, the radios here at the police and fire and dispatch. DPW highway truck is a Ford F-350, $60,000. DPW water hydrant valve replacements. Um, we had a few questions on that during the uh, informational public forum. And this is to replace fire hydrants that are very old or in disrepair around town. And I want to say there was, I remember if it was five or six that could be replaced for that cost. John, do you remember? It was five or six. Uh, another DPW water truck, F-350, from Water Reserves, and DPW sewer pipe lining and repairs, 130000 You may have seen some of the trucks out on North Maple and River Drive this week. They are lining sewer pipes. So a lot of these sewer pipes are 50 plus years old, and uh, rather than dig them up and put new pipes in, they can line them and extend their lives for 50 or even 100 years without having to replace the sewer pipes. Uh, Hadley Media Equipment, $15,000. That's coming from Hadley Media Reserves to update uh, their equipment. Any questions on 5.1 before I move to 5.2? 5.2. Second separate article. All right, so again, Select the Work Finance Committee and Capital Planning all recommend this unanimously. Are there any questions regarding Article 5.1? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your cards. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Article 5.2, move that the town vote to amend Article 5 of the November 7, 2019 Special Town Meeting, which authorized the town to borrow $30,000 to repair DPW gas pumps by directing such funds for the purpose of decommissioning the DPW gas pumps. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Phil. So the town has a 10,000 10, gallon diesel tank and a 10,000 gallon uh, gas tank at the DPW. They're underground tanks, they're fairly old, and the plan was to repair them. That's what was voted on in 2019 for $30,000. Uh, part of the problem we have is when the gas tank falls below half capacity, the pumps vapor block during warm weather. So during cold weather, during cold weather, it works just fine. But during the summer, if the tank falls below 50% capacity, we can't get fuel out of the tank. Um, as part of the investigation into this issue, it was found that we're either going to need to replace the, the pumps, and that would cost in the range of 400,000, probably more. Uh, or we would have to decommission the pumps and use fleet cards or some other source to get our fuel in town. Uh, if you've been down to the DPW yard, uh, you can see that the, the space is at quite a premium down there. And due to uh, updated DEP regulations, we're told that the tanks would have to be above ground tanks rather than underground tanks that we currently have. And we really just don't have the space down there. Uh, for two 10,000 gallon above ground tanks and new pumps. So we're, we're looking at other, other options, but we'd like to repurpose this $30,000 uh, for decommissioning if needed. Thank you. Select Board, Finance Committee, and Capital Planning all unanimously recommend this. Are there any questions? Paula, I'm Paula Stepa, 49 Um I have a question as to whether or not there have been any... Hang on, Paula, get yourself situated yeah. and then ask, please. Okay, if there has been any other, um, a preliminary 21E or HAZMAT investigation on the site, so when these tanks are decommissioned or if they're required to be excavated, if they're in release, 
that contaminated soil would be able to be remediated or removed. You got it, Mike. I think. So the removal of the underground tanks actually falls under the fire department. So a permit to pull through the fire department to remove it, and you hire the independent contractor that comes in and does soil sampling. There are no reports on file with the fire department right now for any kind of a release, but uh, for that size project, we would have to contract an underground uh, engineer to come up and do those tests. But the combination of engineering and also the Thank you. Hang on, Mike. So, follow-up question to that is: Is are there funds dedicated that, if in fact you do um, find the consultant find that there has been an underground release, are there funds uh, contingent to do that hazmat cleanup? Right now, no. Uh, this thirty thousand dollars. Since it had already been approved by town meeting in 2019, is really just a we'll call it a down payment on this project. It's likely going to be much more than thirty thousand dollars, especially if we have to remove the tanks, the pumps, the uh, the steel awning structure that's over there. Uh, there's going to be a lot more to the overall project. Uh, so once we make that final decision, whether we're going to put new pumps in or contract out, then we'll come back for the full amount from town meeting, hopefully in the spring. Thank you. Mr. Waskevich, you want to say something? Yeah, uh, these have been, they were new installed in 98, I believe, Mike, and they got cathodic protection on them right now. They're tested every year, and as far as we know, there's no leaks or no mitigation uh, pending right now at this time. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 6. Move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $750,000 from free cash to the stabilization fund. This is a recommended by the select board and the finance committee unanimously. Do I have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Joyce, right, are you going to speak to this? Thank you. Uh, so to see, we're going to transfer back in the stabilization $750,000. Over the past two years, we have taken from stabilization. We did have a balance in there of about 2.3 million we like to keep it around two but in the past couple of years we've had to use the stabilization so now at this time this year we're able to put back in the 750 which will bring us back to about two million uh, or a little bit better so that's a good thing okay thank you any questions seeing none all those in favor Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 7. This is recommended by the select board unanimously. Move that the town accept ownership of the Goodwin Memorial Library from the trustees of the Goodwin Memorial Library to the town of Hadley to be held for general, general municipal purposes. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Wachkevich, speak to this. Uh, yeah, th this article is necessary for the town ownership of the Goodwin Memorial Library, the old Goodwin Memorial Library, uh, to take over and run municipal uh, office space out of it. Uh, basically just a technicality from the trustees to the town of Adelaide, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, does anybody have any questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor?
Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 8. Move that the town, oh, this is recommended by the select board, the finance committee, and the community preservation act committee unanimously. Move that the town vote to transfer, transfer $6,200 from the community preservation act general fund to the town of Hadley public library trustees for the historic John Gnatic Old Hadley Hero Restoration. Said expenditures be expended within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unexpended funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Okay, the motion and a second. Uh, somebody from the CPA wants to talk to this, please. Mary Fair, 179 Hockenham Road. Just want to add that in fiscal year 21, the CPA fund was increased by 489,000. 40% of that came from the state, just under 200,000. And the rest um, was from town residents and businesses with a 3% surcharge on real estate taxes. The fund right now available is 2,261,000. Um, CPA funds can only be used for open space and outdoor recreation, housing resources, and historic preservation with specific guidelines. The Donatic mural is on display at the library. It's Four feet by eleven feet, and just painted by John Donat, who's a highly native who graduated from Hopkins. He painted it sixty-five years ago to depict parts yeah, 6, of or two hundred. Right, to depict I parts think. of um, Hadley's history, and it's a special mural. He's a wonderful artist and very talented, and um, it was generously donated by Ted Chikowski to the town, and. It needs a little bit of work. The frame needs to be fixed. It we stretched. There's some cleaning and repair work. And also to have it varnished so it'll last for many years into the future. And the cost of that is the $6,200. Okay, thank you, Mary. Uh, there seems to be a little confusion as to what I announced as the dollar amount. Uh, if I did not say so, it's 6200 which is what Mary just reiterated. So, are there any questions? Mr. Matusko. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. Uh, the previous article, we transferred the ownership of the Goodman Memorial Library to the Board of Selectmen. This says that we're going to give CPA money to the uh, library trustees. Does that matter? I don't know the answer to that. Town Council, do you know? I, I think he's concerned with the entity receiving the money. Is right. that correct, Evan? Right. 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 They want to hear you. Hey. Hello. I don't think the previous article is the concern. It's just where the money is, I guess. Anyone clarify, please, because I'm confused. Right, I don't mean to confuse anybody. I think this is a good uh, use of CPA funds. But the previous article, we transferred the ownership of the Goodman Memorial Library from the tra trustees to the Board of Selectmen. This article says that we're going to give the money to the bo Board of Library Trustees. Right. For the that closure? For the new library. I don't, I don't see any issue with it. I don't know. I, I, don't, I have no issue with it. We do. Okay, as long as you're, you're on record saying that. I'm on record saying that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Morris Friedman. Do we know who is going to be doing the restoration work? I believe your answer is forthcoming. We're right there, 179 Hopkins Road. We have a quote from Michelson Gallery. Do you hear that, Andy? Okay, but my only question is that some paintings are ruined by varnishing. Um, watercolors, possibly acrylics. 
So is that something that they suggested? Or um, I just don't want to ruin this painting trying to save it. Thank you. Um, it is something they suggested, but um, I will pass it on to Alan Weinberg to have them revisit that question. Okay, thanks. You, Mr. Brown, would you like to speak? Closer to the microphone, please. Stanley Brown, 14 Walton Island Drive. Uh, from what I heard Mary say earlier, the painting is in the new library. If I'm, I believe that's where it is. It's not in the old library. Correct. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 9. And I'm going to, uh, as a friendly change suggested by the CPA for this, in the article, they're asking for $6,400 for some picnic tables, but they've done a little accounting work and realized that they have money left over from a previous grant to the CPA. So we're going to change the $6,400 to $3,100, and that is at the request of the chair of the CPA, as long as nobody has a problem with it. Okay. So, article 9. Move that the town vote to transfer $3,100 the Community Preservation Act Open Space and Recreation Fund to purchase additional picnic tables for the pavilion on elementary school grounds. Set funds to be extended under the direction of the DPW and the town administrator within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unexpended funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. And again, this is unanimously recommended by the Select Board, the Finance Committee, and the Community Preservation Act Committee. Do I have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Uh, Mary, you want to speak to this, please? Or Tim? Tim Nyhart, 16 Kosher Drive. I'm a member and chair of the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, so a number of years ago, uh, everybody voted for some money through CPA to build the um, pavilion. That was all done by volunteer effort. Uh, we're at the end. We have a few dollars left in the coffers, but uh, everybody wants some picnic tables for it. Uh, so we have decided to purchase six commercial grade picnic tables that have a 10 year warranty on them. They're metal. Uh, there's gonna be three that are rectangular and three that are uh, circular. Uh, they're all, uh, they have the epoxy coating on them so they're not going to rust. So. We're just asking for everybody to uh, vote and allow us to purchase some picnic tables for the pavilion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nyhart. Does anybody have any questions on this? Mr. Morris Friedman. Mr. Moderator, I have your street, 45 Roosevelt Street in Hadley. Uh, I'm going to vote in favor of this uh, CPA expenditure, but it troubles me that this will be the first, if it passes, this will be the first CPA expenditure that was not approved by the CPA Coalition in Boston. Their advice is that this was not an appropriate use of CPA funds. Even though I'm voting yes, my concern is that it's the thin end of the wedge. Uh, and it would be very hard for CPA to say no to people in the future who want to spend funds on projects that are not approved. Thank you. 
Mary? Mary, Mary Fair, 179 Hockenham Road. Um, I just want to comment on that. We did have a long discussion on this. The pavilion was paid for with CPA funds. Um, this wasn't something totally disconnected. And also, a year ago, um, the town approved spending funds for lighting and some picnic tables. So this was just kind of completing the job that had already been approved in the past. So I think we can separate that out from additional requests, um, similar additional requests. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes. Article 10. The columns at the front of the town hall. The select board, the finance committee, community preservation act committee all recommend this unanimously. Move that the town vote to transfer thirty-one thousand dollars from the community preservation act general fund. Said funds to be in addition to the thirty-five thousand dollars previously approved at the 2018 annual town meeting for the preservation and or rehabilitation of the historic four pillars in front of the town hall. Said funds to be expended under the direction of the select board and the municipal buildings committee within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unexpended funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Do I have a motion? A motion and a second. Somebody from the CPA or building Committee want to speak to this, please? So as you can see from the article, a number of years ago, we passed an article of $35,000 to fix the pillars in front of Town Hall. Unfortunately, right now, uh, the degradation of those pillars are a lot further along than we thought. And, uh, Certainly based on dollar figures now to do work, and this is very specialized work, we're going to have to request more money. We have the $35,000, um, part of that is being used to paint them, but in order to paint them, we've got to make sure that they're restored. Again, extremely specialized work due to the way that they were actually constructed. Uh, so we're just asking for more money so we can get those things back in the original condition that they were. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. David Ryman, 310 River Drive. Um, do, my only question is, do we have an idea of the lifespan of the columns after this work is done, do we have an estimate of how long until they'll need to be repaired again? Okay, you were kind of hopeful, but I think you asked for the lifespan, is that correct? Yes. Okay, can, can you answer that? I know you can't give a definitive, but... Yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right. I can't give a, a specific um, timeline, but we want to do these things correctly. We want it done professionally. We want to get the proper people in there that know how to fix these very unique structural type of columns. They uh, certainly, if you purchase a column today, they're not even close to how these are made. There are specific uh, pieces from top to bottom and uh, they're all attached Literally, and uh, it just needs you. It's very unique work, but the hope is that it's going to last again for another hundred years. That's our hope. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Paulette. Paulette Pisteva, Forty Nightly Road. Um, many of the. CPA projects when they were approved, and this is just a question, I think this is a good project. But if this, the 35,000 was previously approved in 2018, was there a caveat on that? 
those expenditure of those funds that if they were not expended within two years, that they had to be returned to the CPA fund. Um, if that is the case, then this should actually be for 66,000 because technically those funds should have been returned at the Springtown meeting to the CPA. Good. Does everybody understand what she said? So in essence, at some point in time, I used to be on the CPA committee, so at one point in time, I don't know when exactly that was, they started putting this caveat that I read when, when I read the motions that says if the money is expended within two years of town meeting, it has to be returned. So the question, like Paul, is it's more than two years since the money got granted at town meeting, so was there a caveat back then and does it need to be returned because it wasn't spent in a timely fashion? There. Mary Thayer, 179 Hockenham Road. There was a caveat for two years. Last annual town meeting, 2020, when it would have been up, we extended at town meeting it for another two years. So that money is still available. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Article 11, it's another CPA article. Select Board, Finance Committee, and Community Preservation Act Committee all recommend this unanimously. Move that the town vote to transfer $75,000 from the Community Preservation Act Housing Fund to the Hadley Housing Authority for the preservation of the Golden Court Apartments by installing airtight windows and to authorize the select board to enter into a grant agreement with the Hadley Housing Authority setting forth the terms of said grant, including a provision requiring said funds to be expended within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Any unexpended funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund by that date. Do I have a motion? And a second? Motion and a second. Who's going to speak to this from the CPA? Mary Fair, 179 Hockenham Road. Is anyone here from the Housing Authority? I'd like to address it. Um, I don't see anybody there. Okay. The Housing Authority has Golden Court with 40 units on our senior housing in town here. And they're looking to replace 131 windows, which is all the windows on the 40 apartments plus in the community building. And they've gotten a grant from the state, the Department of Housing and Community Development, that covers 60%, the remaining 40% they've asked the CPA for, which is at the 75,000 is the remaining 40% um, of the cost. So this is, the CPA funds can be used to help protect the building, since it's just housing, um, it can be used to protect the building. So replacing the windows helps do that. Thank you. Mr. Horowitz. Forget you, Dan. Hang on. Michelle Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. I am speaking not for myself, but for Paula Gabby, who is a Golden Court resident and who works on Saturdays. So she could not be here. Um, she asked me to read this, and it's just scrolled away, so give me a second. Here we go. This was built in the 60s. The windows are perfectly fine, and it will be torture on us if they want to replace inhabited units. I don't know how they will do it, plus it will be the lowest bid. They always do the lowest bid, which is usually breaks or very, very poor quality. Um, and that's basically what she said. I, I have no issue here. This is, I'm, I'm just reporting what this resident who couldn't be here said. Thank you. Mr. DeKevitz. Dan Kevitz, 130 Hockenham Road, Hadley. I also am a former member of the CPA committee. 
Uh, I'm not in favor of this article. This is a state building. The residents there, when they pay their rent, I believe the money goes to the state. So I'm wondering why in the heck would we be picking up the bill for this? Thank you. Do we have anybody that can answer that question? Right there, 179 Hawkenham Road. I'm not sure I can. Um, apparently, according to the CPA coalition, that the housing committee, the H, the housing community development um, that gave them the grant, is encouraging ho um, housing authorities all over the state to apply for CPA funds um, as a way to make up that difference. They came to us. It seemed to fit um, within the guidelines, so that's why we're presenting it today. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I said he wants to talk. He was. I, I don't see anybody. Any, anybody else have any questions or comments on this? Yes. Pat Rissmeyer, 28 Meadow Street. I would be interested in hearing from those who voted for this as to why they vote, voted for it. Those who voted for this meeting who? The select board member. Uh, who recommended it? That's right. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I, I voted for it. I voted for it in the end. Um, again, I didn't feel that we should take public, our public funds and give the state funds. But in looking at the total picture, a lot of our residents live in, in the Golden Court. So I really I really feel like why wouldn't we support having them have good windows and uh, keeping out the heat and the cold. Um, so that's really why I voted for it. I think that it's our due responsibility to take care of our elders as best we can, whether or not uh, we feel like it should be our responsibility because of um, it being state run. So that's why I did. Go ahead, Amy. Um, so I, I feel similar to uh, how Joyce just said. I, again, I voted for it because I don't think that people that are in a situation where they're living should be punished for, I mean, essentially punished. Um, for their situation and not taken care of by our town. Um, I do think moving forward, it would be a good idea to be looking more for state funding on projects. But I think with winter coming, this is something that we need to take care of now and then in the future revisit other options for funding. Jane, go ahead. I have been Jane uh, Evans Smith, I have been appointed by the select board to be a liaison to the Golden Court community, and I, in the past couple of months, have spent a fair amount of time there talking to the tenants. And while it is a state run program. Um, it does require funds from local communities to keep things going. The condition of the windows are the, they are the original windows that were put in when the place was built. You all have homes, you know what that means. Um, and yes, what Paul and Gabby says is correct. Anybody who has windows replaced has a bit of inconvenience. But the long-term advantage of having a better airtight condition will help the tenants, especially Thank you. Is that enough? Okay, got that. Dan, I, I originally had a bunch of questions about this, and we discussed it at a couple, uh, a couple of the select board meetings, and we really need to address the state with their issues over there. It is an old facility. They've got heating issues, water main issues, sewer main issues, window issues, et cetera, et cetera. We, we, are going to, we are in the process, I believe, of contacting the state and seeing what they have to say for themselves. 
uh, about running and maintaining that place for our elderly and our citizens. Thank you. Mr. DeKevitz. Oh, we got, hang on, Dan. One more up here. The, uh, the state, unfortunately, has been a visible failure when it comes to building work as far as maintenance, uh, taking responsibility for their maintenance duties. Uh, we had a water break, water main break, uh, it was last winter, I believe. The town had to step in and fix the water main break because the state didn't care that the residents would have been without water to their, uh, their apartments there for multiple days until we could get, get a hold of somebody. We ended up getting reimbursed for work. Uh, but the reality is we have several hundred thousand dollars of CPA funds that are set aside for affordable housing. And though I don't, I don't think we should have to take, take up the slack for the state, the reality is we shouldn't be punishing Hadley residents because the state's a miserable failure when it comes to affordable housing. Thank you. Dan. Uh, Dan Dittkevitz, 130 Hockenham Road. It is not my intent to punish anybody. It's just that I fail to see how the state can take the money for rent and not put it back into the building. It's that simple. They don't do the maintenance. So I don't think it's wise or fair for us to put this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Andy. Andy Morris from 45 Roosevelt Street. The state is paying for the majority of this project. There's a small percentage that the towns have to come up with. The state pays for the rest. 75,000, you get five windows for that these days. So the state is paying the vast majority. We are paying a small fraction. And the beauty of CPA is that 40% of the CPA money also comes from the state. So you and I, well, we pay state taxes, but you and I, from our Havley taxes, are only paying for 60% of the $70,000. Using CPA money to pay for this is the best deal going. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, this is a majority vote. So all those in favor, please indicate by raising your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, Article 12 is the last CPA article. Select board recommends 500. Finance committee recommends 400. Community Preservation Act committee recommends 610. Move that the town vote to transfer $100,000 from the Community Preservation Act Housing Fund to the Hadley Affordable Housing Trust. Do I have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Somebody say something or is this screen is going by in the car? Mr. Dwyer, could you speak to this please? Yes, I could. Thank you. Hi, uh, Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive, and I am a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So, um, a bit of background on CPA, first of all. Uh, there are multiple pockets in the CPA account, and various uh, portions of the CPA fund can only be spent for the dedicated purpose of that pocket. Uh, historical preservation, open space, and in this case, affordable housing. So it can't, the portion of the, uh, and Mary, do you remember how, hmm? Uh, presently there's 308,000 in the affordable housing pocket of the Community Preservation Act. <clears throat> uh, a year ago we did create an affordable housing trust fund which uh, is charged with looking at affordable housing issues that was constituted uh, with a board appointed by the select board. At the moment, it consists of five members of the planning board, two members of the select board, or one former select board member, and one current select board member. So that's also charged with dealing with affordable housing issues. 
Uh, to date, apart from the Golden Court windows, I don't think anything uh, has been taken out of the affordable housing pocket of CPA. And it's a pretty technical area. The Affordable Housing Trust Fund trustees have been working on this for many years, uh, probably five or six years, going to seminars on the affordable housing issue. And um, there is statutory authority for the Community Preservation Act to transfer affordable housing funds to an affordable housing trust fund. Likewise, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund has authority to receive that money from the CPA. The portion that will go from the CPA to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund will be subject to the same rules as would apply if it were still in CPA. The difference is the Affordable Housing Trust Fund can act more quickly as circumstances arise. So just by way of example, we've approved 75,000 for uh, uh, new windows. If it turns out that the bill goes slightly higher, um, <clears throat> can't really wait until next spring to get the balance uh, from the next town meeting, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund would have authority to step in and advance some funds to, towards completion. There are no pending projects, but we're trying to stay ahead of the uh, curve on this one. And for planning purposes, we'd like, we initially had requested a transfer of the current affordable housing po uh, pocket in its entirety, but uh, everyone agreed that 100,000 would be a good start, and we'll see how it works out and how the affordable housing trust fund can make use of it. And the benefit to the CPA committee is they don't have to learn the affordable housing rules. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer. Does anybody have any questions on this? Dina, go ahead. Dina Friedman, 16 Barstow Lane. I'd like to ask a couple of questions. One is, are there plans with the Affordable Housing Trust? Like, what um, expectation would there be in the next, say, two years that there would be some project that the money could be well spent for the purpose? And if the money is not spent, does it go back to the CPA as much other money has done in the clauses? Bill Dwyer, 388 River Drive. Uh, to sort of answer in reverse, um, this is a permanent transfer of this 100,000 component from CPA to Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Whether uh, there is no specific project looming, but uh, both funds are serving the same goal and the money has to be handled according to the same rules, whether it is managed by CPA or by the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So it's a paper transfer for now. Uh, it, nothing, if nothing happens, nothing's lost one way or the other. And as again, I'd just like to point out that apart from this $75,000 Article 11 approval, I don't believe that CPA has touched the affordable housing pocket in its existence. Thank you. Mayor? Mary Thayer, 179 Hawkenham Road. Um, not to, just to point out, we did authorize 25,000 for the rental assistance. And years ago, there's been a few small things, but nothing very large. And I, I guess I may have misspoke. The 308,000 was before we just approved 75,000. So right now there's a balance of about 225,000 in the, um, that pocket. But keep in mind the general fund can be used for any three of those buckets. So it could be used for, that's not limiting what's affordable housing. We could spend more on that over time. Um, but that, that 225,000 can only be used for affordable housing. Thank you. 
Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. Motion passes. Article 13. This is from the Planning Board. It's a zoning bylaw change that requires two-thirds majority. Planning Board recommends this 5-0-0. Move that the town vote to amend section 17.3.2 of the town zoning bylaws as written in the warrant. Do I have a motion? Second. A motion and a second. Mr. Maximowski, you speak to this please. Okay. The Having Planning Board recommends this article. Basically, this is a housekeeping article. The difference is right now where it says on a, the words on a public way right now spe specify certain streets, North Maple Street, um, Route 9, etc. And it was written by petition a number of years ago. And this is where the words came from, and it caused some troubles lately in that it excluded certain streets and town that are on a business or industrial zone. So we're simply changing it to any business or industrial zone that has Fourth Edge on a public way. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions on this? Shell. Cell phone 16 Barstow Lane. Is this related to the transfer of development rights we passed uh, maybe 12, 15 years ago? This is part of the TDR bylaw, and right now, um, this section of TDR bylaw was by petition a few years ago, and it limits business or industrial use to 75,000 square feet. If you want to put a building up larger than 75,000 square feet, you need to buy transfer of development rights. So for each acre of farmland, you would get 2,000 square Wind is blowing out there. 2,000 square feet of uh, additional building. And that's what this is about. So if you want to put a bigger than 70, a lar builder, building larger than 75,000 square feet, you would need to purchase TDR rights. And that's what this is about. Okay, so this basically expands the places where those rights can be used. And as I was on the long range plan implementation committee when this came up, we supported it strongly at the time. I still support it. I'm going to vote yes. Thank you. Uh, Jenny. Town Council wants me to ask you if you held a public hearing on this article. Yes, we did. We had a public when? hearing. Do you remember when? Pardon? Pardon? Do you remember when? The public, hearing on, well, the public hearing on the zoning article was a month ago. The public hearing proposed for the TDR is uh, in next Tuesday, the first Tuesday of, uh, the first Tuesday of November. Two weeks. It's the first Tuesday of November for the TDR, right, Bill? Did, did you have a public hearing regarding the, the bylaw? Yes. Change? Yes, we did. And we need to know, he needs to know when that is, was. I believe that was October, the first Tuesday in October. So that would have been the... Yeah. Uh, just, just, for the, just, just for the record, the planning board recommended it was not 500, it was 401 with one member absent. Oh, I was misinformed. Okay. Uh, is that satisfactory? Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Anybody have any other questions or comments on this? Again, this, is, this requires two-thirds. All those in favor, indicate by raising your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. 
Okay, Article 14. Move that the town vote to opt out of the mosquito spraying program conducted under the State Reclamation and Mosquito Control Board, SRMCD, as authorized under Mass General Laws, Chapter 252, Section 2A, B, 2. And the select board does not recommend this by a vote of one in favor, four against, zero abstentions. And before I, have, before I take a motion in a second, I just want everybody to be aware I'm going to try to get as many people as I can to, to explain what this is all about so that we can talk about it intelligently. Uh, so that being said, do I have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Okay, who's going to speak to this? Jane Evans, then, please. The, uh so I were talked about this in early summer when we were too late to make a um, move to the state to place our position on this and we agreed that we would bring it to the fall town meeting and that is what we're doing. This is different from the vote we took in May of 2018 because that was a regional mosquito spray program, the state spray program. Okay, does anybody else have anything they, from the select board like to say about it? Do you have any questions out in the audience? May I take my mask, I take yes. mask off to speak? Thank Please. you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Roberta Kamen. I'm a resident at 85 Mount Water Road in Hadley. I'm a backyard beekeeper and a retired farmer with Mount Warner Vineyards. Um, I just want to clarify before I make my remarks, because opt out is a negative thing, I just want to make sure that we clarify what the vote would mean if we vote to approve, we are approving to opt out. Is that correct? Yeah, if a yes vote means we opt out, a no vote means we stay in. Thank you very much for the clarification. I believe there are too many unknown factors, red flags, potential risks, and questions to vote not in favor of this article. The, some facts, and I took this from the MDAR website, so I just want to give you my sources and also some label information from the chemicals that are used. I am not an expert, so this is research I've done, but I believe I have some facts. There are currently two chemical application methods employed by the State Reclamation Mos Mosquito Control Board to control mosquitoes. One is truck spraying and another is aerial spraying, both of which may use different chemicals. Anvil 10 plus 10 is one of the chemicals used for mosquito control as, and is stated on the product label. And this is a, all chemicals have to have a product label, states on it, quote, Toxic to aquatic, aquatic organisms, including fish and invertebrates. This product is highly toxic to, toxic to bees exposed to direct treatment on blooming crops or weeds. MDAR states that any aerial spraying would take place between 7 p.m. and 4 a.m., which reduces but does not eliminate the risk to honeybees. The timing assumes that all honeybees and pollinators are in their hives, but as a beekeeper, I know that bees are still foraging while it is still light and that they congregate on the outside of their hives to cool off during hot summer evenings, kind of like hang out in the porch to cool off. There are other very safe methods to mitigate the risk of mosquito-borne illnesses before throwing chemicals at the problem. Insect repellents, staying inside during dust, source reduction by eliminating residential standing water, etc. Before voting, that we should not opt out. I, I, there are many questions, and I just want to bring up a couple of them to get you thinking about this. While we know that Anvil 10 plus 10 is toxic to fish, invertebrates, and bees, we don't know what the other environmental risks and health hazards are on the short and long term. Another question, who decides what the thresholds and criteria for spraying in Hadley? Is it the local Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control? Board, or is it the State Reclamation Mosquito Control Board? Do we even know 
have we even talked to the Regional Mosquito Control Board? When and how is it decided whether a lavicide or a pest adult aside treatment will be applied? Lavicide is much less lethal in terms of toxicity. What are the plans and what are actions the town is willing to take to mitigate the spread of mosquitoes before spraying? What can we even do to prevent the problem? And finally, um, what are the specific plans the town might have to notify its residents as to when and where spraying takes place to allow us to take steps to mitigate the impact? On the state website, it says you may consider, it's not saying you recommend, but you may consider closing windows, keeping pests and staying inside, covering beehives, etc. I, I don't know if Senator Comer, Comerford is still here. I don't believe she is. Okay, I spoke to her brief, briefly, and I don't want to take words out of her mouth, but she did tell me that uh, there's a lot of work being done at the state level now. And one of the big problems they ran into to some of the communities that they sprayed this year is that the Anvil 10 plus 10 was stored in containers that were contaminated with PFAS. I don't know the chemical, I don't have the background on the chemical, it's a very toxic, dangerous chemical in effect, the liver, et cetera. So they tried to do cleanup because a lot of groundwater was actually contaminated this year from the spraying. I know there's many questions to be addressed. There's lots of discussion going on right now at the state level. And if we vote to approve opting out, it will give us the go ahead and the time needed to develop an informed and complete opt out application for the 2022 state deadline, which is to be done. But to get into the system, votes need to be taken now. More Bravo, please. Bravo, please. Sure. We should vote in favor to opt out. While opting out doesn't guarantee we will not be sprayed, not to apply would say it is okay to expose all of us, fish and essential beneficial pollinators to hazardous chemical control of mosquitoes. Thank you. Thank you. Hang on, hang on. Sherry, go ahead. Sharon Parsons, 137 Mill Valley Road. I am not in favor of this. It's like closing the barn door before you put your horse in. We should not opt out until we know that there is another plan that we are ready to opt out with. We can't just say, oh, we're going to opt out and not have a plan ready. Bees are harmed by pesticides, there's no doubt. But the primary cause of bee problems right now is housing, the number of houses that are built, which is environmental, pests and parasites. We haven't sprayed in 10 years in this town. So at this point in time to go ahead and opt, not opt out, uh, would be foolish. We don't know that we're going to need to spray. Lastly, I have a very personal reason for being against this. My brother's wife nearly died of mosquito-borne encephalitis. It is an issue that we humans can help by getting rid of water waste to set water that's sitting in our homes, but it does happen. She was three weeks in the hospital, comatose part of that, came out unable to even pick up her toddler, unable to sign her name. So if we want to put humans in that kind of danger, well then go ahead and get rid of opting out. But I say we need to stay here until there is another solution to solving the mosquito problem rather than just dumping the prop the program that we already have thank you thank you bobby hang on you got other people that want to talk Susan, is that you come on up to the microphone in. Susan Mosler. Get closer to the microphone, please. Closer. Susan Mosler. Uh, I live at uh, 14 Hockenham Road. I'm uh, chair of the Hadley Board of Health and a physician who's. Uh, hey, hang on. Some doesn't seem to be computing. I'm a physician who's uh, board certified in internal medicine and chair of the Hadley Board of Health. Um, I'm joined on the Board of Health by Margaret Mastrangelo, who's a board certified nurse practitioner, and Greg Mish, 
who was educated in our Hadley Public Schools and uh, involved in farming here in Hadley for many, many years. The Board of Health is perplexed by the stance of the Select Board on two major public health issues facing Hadley today, COVID-19 vaccination policies for Keep to the point, please. COVID is not on the article. And aerial, aerial spraying of pesticides. As to aerial spraying, the Select Board uh, appears to be in favor of spraying large areas of our town with toxic pesticides to reduce the already very small risk of a resident of Hadley becoming infected with either Eastern Equine Encephalitis virus or West Nile virus. This past year, 2021, as of October 7th, there have been eight cases of West Nile virus and zero cases of Eastern Equine Encephalitis virus in the entire state of Massachusetts, population approximately 7.1 million people. So it seems that an individual's right to decide if one wants to be exposed to toxic chemicals uh, is clearly not a priority. Uh, let's be clear. The science tells us that these chemicals are indeed toxic to humans and many other life forms. Uh, the Board of Health supports opting out of aerial spraying of pesticides. There are many other ways that we can all uh, reduce our individual risk of becoming infected with either Eastern Equine Encephalitis virus or West Nile virus that do not involve widespread spraying of chemicals. Staying indoors from dusk to dawn, wearing long sleeves and long pants, use of bug spray, and removing standing water from one's property are ways to reduce the already very small chance of being infected. Thank you. Edwin. Hi, Edwin, you have two stone, 16 Stockbridge Street. Are we voting on eliminating this this year? or next year or when, because it's a little late now to spray for mosquitoes. And is this just for the future or is it for now? Thank you. So may I have a slight board answer that, please? This is for the upcoming year because we already voted for this year. So the next time to opt out would be by, I believe, May 28th of next year, or around that time. Oh, it sounds like I also have the knife. Um, opting out doesn't mean that we're not gonna get sprayed. Like, we will get trumped by the state. And also, it's a seven-step process to opt out. So anybody that wants to opt out, I think, should form a committee to create the pest management control plan that you'll have to give to the state, which they may or may not override. Also, by certain states or certain towns opting in, opting out, you're creating a patchwork quilt of Massachusetts. And I don't know, I don't think that mosquitoes can tell where the town line is to turn around. Um, so that's another thing too. They'll move. It's yeah. It's um it, yeah. It's it's kind of a process, but I invite anybody that wants to opt out to probably be a part of a committee for that. Also, you really can't tell people to stay home or inside. Um, there are farmers that work outside, and mosquitoes do bite through pants and long sleeve shirts. I can attest to that. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. David Ryman, 310 River Drive. Um, I think it, it's a pretty good point about the patchwork system. I do worry about having every town in, Hat or every town in Massachusetts have a different policy on mosquitoes. Um, but at the same time, as a resident of Hadley, I would feel better if we weren't just spraying our town, because we can control what kind of environmental sprays we're exposed to on the local level. And it's true that another town can spray their town, and maybe that'll help our mosquito population. Um, so I get that mosquitoes move, but the chemicals we can determine right here and now whether we're going to be exposed to them in our community. Thank you. Mr. Silvestro. Oh, 
Okay, I'll get to you. Hang on. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Donna. I, Donna, I called you. Go ahead. John Silvestro, 157 Rocky Hill Road. Mr. Moderator, I move the question. Okay, okay so the question, the mo it's a motion to move the question, which means he's had, a, he's had enough conversation. It requires, a two, it requires a second number one and a two thirds majority to pass. All right, so we have a motion and a second. So we're going to vote to stop the discussion on this right now. And again, it's two thirds. So all those in favor of stopping the discussion, raise your cards. Opposed to stopping the conversation, raising cards. Thank you. 37 in favor, 33 against. It does not meet the two-thirds majority, so conversation continues. Michelle. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Um, Amy is correct in saying that um, we would have to come up with an alternative mosquito management plan. I think that's a good thing. Some of the requirements of the state is that we have a public meeting, the Board of Health is consulted, public comment was allowed, and I propose that we have public comment in a special form on opt-out because it is a complicated issue, and that we have to come up with an alternative mosquito management plan. I know there are people willing to be part of that committee. If we do not vote to opt out today, we'll have to probably wait for a whole other year, depending on when Springtown meeting is held because as far as I know, a date hasn't been set yet. One of the issues with this is also, this gives us not total municipal control, but it gives us more say in what happens. Granted, the state can override the opt-out option if they consider us at a considerable degree of risk, but we actually have more control by choosing this, another thing that the opt-out does is send a message to the state that there's a fair number of people who are interested in alternative ways that aren't as destructive to the environment or toxic to people and that um, problems don't have to be, you don't have to hit the nail with a sledgehammer. You can use a finer tool to get the job done. Thank you. Hang on, Bobby. I got more people behind you. Hello, Beth Epstein, 77 Hockenham Road. So I agree with Michelle that there are alternative treatments. And um, there was an article written a year ago in um, the Boston Globe, and Joe Comerford was quoted as. Uh, being highly skeptical about the safety of the chemicals used to treat the Massachusetts mosquito aerial spraying. And one of the chemicals is called Anvil 10 plus 10. And the problem is often there are these, I don't know if you want to call them, well, there are these other elements called PF. AS, and they're, they're called um, or they're nicknamed forever chemicals because they don't fully um, degrade um, in the soil and they've also been found um, to be higher in uh, water tables that were sprayed uh, in the Massachusetts aerial spraying. 
And one of the problems with aerial spraying is it's very discriminate. And if the wind blows, um, the chemicals are dispersed very differently than if there's no wind. And I think for me, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of opting out. And if you look at the history of Agent Orange, it took 40 years before everything was known about that chemical. And there were people who continued to suffer and get cancer, and there were people who diligently served the nation. So, and even then they couldn't get the treatment that they needed. So I, I just think uh, we could be wise at this point that, and just opt out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dina. Hi, Dina Friedman, 16 Barstow Lane. I'm kind of perplexed that the town of Hadley, that we tend to pride ourselves on being independent, um, would want the state to make decisions on whether or not we need to dump chemicals on the whole town, which could also put the livelihoods of many of our organic farmers at risk. I listened to the select board meeting when the vote was taken. There was a sense of, oh, well, if you don't want your property sprayed, they won't spray your property, which is a bunch of garbage because the wind will blow where it's going to blow. And if we want to talk about patchwork, that is one piece of patchwork that is absolutely not um, not acceptable to people who in our town who are making their livelihoods on their farms. And so I am strongly, strongly in favor of opting out. I made the amendment on town meeting floor in 2018. I know that was the district's frame, but at that time there was enough concern in the town about spraying that even when we joined the district, um, people said, well, I don't want to join the district if they're going to tell us we have to spray. I don't want the state to be telling us we have to spray. And yes, we're going to go through this process. I am happy. I know nothing about pest management, but I am happy to be part of this process. I think people who feel passionately would really put um, their time and energy into developing a plan that would um, address the state's concerns. And even if the state says, no, that's not a reason not to do it. We need to take control as a town and do what's best for the residents of our town and not let the state legislate that. Thank you. Thank you. Shell Dad. Shell Dad, 16 Barstow Lane. Uh, I want to first of all make the business case as a business owner here. Um, Dina mentioned the organic farming uh, sector of the very large agricultural component of our Hadley economy. People may not realize that to get organic certification, first of all, it's a three-year process that you have to continue to farm that way before you even can get the certification. And second, it's very expensive. If I were a commercial organic farmer, I would be extremely upset at dripping pesticides, invalidating my hard-won and expensively uh, obtained certification. That's one thing. Number two, um, East Hampton, I believe, Northampton for sure, Amherst all voted to opt out this past year. Had, we talked about a patchwork. We're the hole in the patch. Um, we, if we, I want to have a unified Central Hampshire County area where no spraying is, is permi uh, permitted by airplane. That is going to benefit the entire area here and make it less likely to be polluted. Uh, number three, if the state, in its wisdom, um, chooses to invalidate as they did with the Amherst and Northampton's plans this year, that is not a reason not to do this. On the contrary, I would urge the select board to actually take some leadership here and enlist the help of Senator Comerford, who is clearly an ally on keeping the state from spraying aggressively and inappropriately, and enlist the help of other officials at the state level and say, this is unacceptable. We just spent all this time and energy to put together the plan that you said we could do, and then you went over our heads anyway. Be ashamed of yourselves and start thinking about the broader issues. 
We have known that pesticides are a problem at least since the publication of Silent Spring by Rachel Carson in the 1960s and probably long before that. We have had 50 plus years to see the problems. We have had at this point about 80 years to see the so-called Green Revolution has caused real issues with chemical contamination and lower food quality around the world. This is one thing we can do as a positive step. We in Hadley can say, we are opting out. Thank you. Bobby, go ahead. You waited long enough. Are you done? Okay. Andy? Andy Morris, we've been 45 Roosevelt Street. Thanks for keeping the discussion going. I think it's really important. Uh, two quick points. First, I'd like to address the argument that um, we have to do something, and spraying is something, therefore we should spray. Um, many times, I think, I find in life that doing nothing is better than doing something bad. Uh, and that nothing is usually the safest course. We haven't sprayed in Hadley for 10 years because it hasn't been necessary. If it was necessary, the state would have rammed it down our throat. No equine encephalitis cases, no West Nile cases, uh, no um, diseases found in local mosquitoes. We don't need to spray. Um, why would anyone want to spray if we didn't have to? Um, I think this is just a, uh, a political fight by people who want spraying, basically, because in my opinion, we don't need to spray because it's not an issue. Um, but personally, balancing the risks, I would rather get a few mosquito bites than develop some kind of neurological disease or cancer uh, based on fear of a mosquito. Uh, one last thing, the way I like to look at it, this vote, is that a yes vote means no spraying, or means no to spraying. A yes vote means no to spraying, and a no vote means yes to spraying. So if you don't want spraying, vote yes. Thank you. Gary? A no vote doesn't mean, a no vote doesn't mean yes to spraying. It simply means that we will stay with a system that's in place. All of the people who think that we should have a different system had a chance in the last six months to come up with a new system. It isn't that I want spraying, it's that I want something already in the system in order to take care of any West Nile virus or anything like that, or, or the, uh, the chance. I know the chance is minute, but it only has to happen to one person to have it happen. If we vote, to approve this. We don't have a plan in place, should the state approve our plan. That should have been done before someone brought to the, to the town warrant and brought to this town meeting a plan to opt out. If you are so determined to opt out, why is a plan for what we're going to do if there is a problem not already in place? We need to do that work. It hasn't been done. Just the Board of Health saying to us that it ought to be that way is not solving the problem. I'll be fine with, with a plan, as long as there is a plan. But I will not vote to opt out until I know there is another plan already in place for dealing with the mosquito problem. We've been fortunate for 10 years that we have not had any issue and we haven't had to spread. And I hope that we we'll continue to be that fortunate. But in the meantime, I want a plan before we opt out. I want a plan already in place. I've personally been affected by it. And maybe it doesn't happen very often, as the kind doctor has told us, but it does happen. Do you want to be the one that it happens to? Thank you. Michelle? Michelle Morris Frieden, 45 Roosevelt Street. I want to point out a couple of things. Even if we sprayed all over regularly, we would probably not eliminate all risk of Triple E or West Nile. You can't kill every mosquito in Massachusetts. Um, or if you did, you would be doing, um, creating a lot of um, other harm. 
Second thing I want to point out, this is not to take place immediately. This is for next year. This is, um, you know, for the May um, 2022, and we will have to have an alternative plan for this to even be accepted by the state. Um, I don't think a lot of us understood exactly what the plan entailed. Looking at meetings, the last um, couple select board meetings, this has been extremely confusing. One other point I want to make is that Joe Comerford's letter here has, um, has recognized that the state process for opt out and the requirements are confusing and difficult to navigate and there will, she is promising with other people to work on the state part of things so that it's easier and that we can get better guidance and so that it is not as daunting as a pro process as it has been. Um, and I just want to say one more thing. We all respond to individual risk because that's how we relate, that's how we think about things. We know people who've been hurt by this or that. Um, I myself had tick-borne illness that was quite severe last year. At the same time, we, it's harder for people to look at the big picture at species other than themselves, long-term effects, because those stories aren't quite so dramatic. And I think that public health people and environmental scientists are trying to look at the whole picture. And the ones who do that find that on balance, we are better off not being exposed to excess chemicals. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby? Yes, I just want to say, I think we're all sensitive, very sensitive to the loss of the uh, relative EEE. I just want to reassure that by voting to opt out today, it still has to, as a process, it has to go to the state for approval, but what goes to the state for approval is an application. If we vote to opt out now, it puts in motion many steps. The first step is a select board, second step is an open meeting, and then there's a very long, detailed application. To mitigate the concern about application, we, this does require this town to put the application together, and I, among other people, are very willing to be part of that. But it does offer us the opportunity to put that plan in place and to vote opt out in favor of opting out now, puts it in motion, gets us ready so that when we hit the spring, we have the plans in place and we then submit it to the, to the state for approval. So we, to, to, a plan will be put in place once we vote to opt out. It seems backwards, but the opting out is just part of the steps involved in the whole process. Thank you. Yeah. Call the question. Call the question. Okay, so calling the question again, which means Sheldon has enough, and we get to decide if we've all had enough. Again, I've got a motion, I need a second. Got a second, I need two, two thirds for this to pass. All those in favor of calling the question. Thank you. All those opposed? Okay, thank you. The motion passes 69 to 1. So, the question is called. We're done with discussion. Now we're going to vote on the motion. So, again, a yes vote means you're voting to opt out. A no vote means you're voting to stay in this mosquito control program. So, all those in favor signify by raising your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, hang on. Pardon? That's just the majority. That's just the majority, so. 
Um, before we call it a day, Jane Nevin Smith has an announcement she'd like to make. Thank you. Hadley has been approved to work on becoming an aging dementia friendly community, and the first step of that is to get a survey from all town residents who are willing to help so that we have a baseline of what we're working. The surveys are on the table out in front. You can either do a paper copy or take a postcard and do it online. Thank you. Okay. All right, so thank you everybody for sticking it out today and doing what you could do to get people to come so that we could actually have this meeting. Once again, Happy Media, thank you for setting this up. EPW, the fire and police people for doing what they do. And no, you don't want to adjourn, you want it to solve. Do the motion to dissolve. Second? Anybody in favor? Thank you all very much. Have a good day.